Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. I'm a cold Tom. So it's uh, like 34 degrees in the shop today. Um, I got my uh, my uh, overalls on, or coveralls. This is an extra layer uh, so I can get a little bit done here. So I got a few things for you guys. Uh, a couple of new tools, some Craigslist finds, uh, wire EDM update. Um, and uh, you know where I am with that process and um, and uh, show you guys that and then um, we'll probably talk about the uh, um, just briefly because I haven't done any work on it uh, the uh, a new handle for the the come along that we've been talking about for the last couple of episodes so uh, I think actually with you guys' help and me experimenting uh, we're converging on a really actually a really nice solution that gives me uh, the best of both worlds on that so uh, um, kinda kinda happy that it's kind of a neat process how that worked and then uh, I guess I want to have a, a you know I, I hate using the safety word but uh, a fellow youtuber recently had a, a pretty serious accident in his shop and I just wanted to, I don't want to talk about his accident, okay? What I want to talk about is safety philosophy. And because um, um, as humans, we're not very good at it. <laughs> and I know I'm not. So uh, I guess I want to have that, a little talk about that and uh, how I think about that kind of stuff, okay? So, uh, hey, let's get cracking, okay? This first uh, thing I want to show you here. It, it's it's kind of dumb, but um, uh, I'm kind I'm kind of uh, uh, I don't know. I'm excited? Is that the right word? I don't know if I'm excited or not. What it is? I mean, it's a it's a bit lighter, right? Okay. Um, but the unique part about this, and I think we all have um, uh, lighters in our shops, right? Uh, that we use for different things. Uh, you might melt the end of a cord. You might uh, light your uh, your propane uh, radiant heater that's right behind you here. Um, you might uh, heat up the end of a, uh, the end of a piece of EDM wire uh, to soften it so that uh, it fits in the auto threader better. So there's uh, all kinds of uses for lighters in the shop. And um, now you know the normal version has a doesn't have this extension piece on it so um, you know when you're when you're using it your fingers are all pretty close to the action there right uh, this you know moves that outboard somewhat anyway uh, I don't know where did I see these I don't even know where I saw them um, somebody had one or I don't know what and I said, oh, that's kind of a cool idea. So anyway, I bought a little pack of three of them, and uh, I've been using the heck out of this thing. And uh, every time I pick it up, it makes me smile because uh, my finger's a little ways away from uh, the action there. And it just works better. These are actually for lighting candles so that you can kind of reach down into the cavity and, uh, you know, and do that. Oops. And... Uh, get it to work so anyway just uh, pointing those out uh, they're they're pretty cheap um, and if you use lighters at all uh, I mean this I wouldn't want this in my pocket if I was uh, uh, carrying one around with me or whatever but uh, for shop um, I think this is uh, this is the the de facto uh, shop configuration so anyway big extended nose lighter uh, candle lighters, I think is what they call them. They come with a, you can't just get black ones, okay, sorry. They come with a bunch of goofy colors and, um, you know, so uh, just buy the cheapest ones you can get. All right, so this next one I want to show you here. Um, you know, we were testing the, um, the, the repair brackets for the, the come along. I was using a, uh, actually a pretty large dynamometer, 10,000 pound. And I was, ha I was having a hard time resolving kind of 50 pound increments. Um, so, you know, I've had a project on the books for, you know, I don't know, a couple of years actually, a YouTube project to build a, another mechanical dynamometer like I, uh, uh, the previous one that I made. Um, but in a, in a smaller range or a lower range, you know, 500 pounds, 300 kilograms, something like that, right? Um, so 
anyways, I started, I went and looked at my notes and, you know, started thinking about it again and, uh, and then popped onto eBay and was looking for some commercial ones. Um, and uh, pretty soon I bumped into this thing here, right? Uh, which is a, it's an Amazon purchase. And um, uh, with a price point that's pretty hard to ignore. So um, it's, and it's right in the sweet spot where, where I wanted to be, right? This one is uh, uh, 300 kilograms, uh, 660 pounds. Um, it's got a, a metal case. Um, I mean, you know, it's not, okay, it's 22 bucks, all right? So I, I didn't have a lot of expectations at 22 bucks, right? And, uh, but it turns out that uh, this thing's pretty, uh, actually pretty sweet. Um, and I can kind of give it a, a recommend. So it kind of does everything you want it to do, right? Reads to a hundredth of a pound. I think it's good to one or two percent of full scale kind of accuracy. Um, we can tear it, we can switch units, kilograms, pounds, newtons, um, and it's a pretty nice little package. I mean, this is a stainless steel shackle here, right? And you know, if you bought that from McMaster, that's a that's a forty forty dollar shackle or fifty dollar shackle just for the shackle. Um, so. It, needless to say, I, I'm not going to build one, at least not right now, and uh, this will serve my serve my needs, right? So, uh, uh, you know, you can weigh packages, you can weigh pieces of metal, you can measure some forces, um, and uh, you know, you can uh, <laughs> put your dog in a harness and uh, and uh, confirm uh, what the vet says that your dog's too fat. And uh, um, and then monitor their weight pretty easily. They're actually kind of a pain to weigh. Um, and uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it at twenty two dollars, right? So it's a actually. I, I, I confess. I, I I said no. You know what? I'm not going to buy the absolute cheapest one. So I bought the twenty seven dollar one, right? But you could get them. And they had, you know, more garish colors, right? I guess I wanted the blue one, uh, and um, but you know, you could get this kind of yellow or you know orange or something weird, right? And uh, and for twenty-two dollars. So uh, there's the name Romac, and then it's uh, Romac Direct at gmail.com is their uh, their email, their direct email. But uh, on Amazon, free delivery with Prime or whatever, and uh, it's a pretty nice. Uh, it's a pretty nice scale. Okay, there's Newtons, right? You know, for our metric folks. And uh, let's see, kilograms, right? And, uh, and pounds, right? And, you know, it's just like dog simple. Three buttons, let's keep it simple. Off you go, Bob's your uncle. Anyway, uh, uh, Romac crane scale, uh, so far, thumbs up. So these are uh, a Craigslist find. And, uh, no, I was not looking for sledgehammer handles on um, on Craigslist. Um, I uh, anyway, I was looking at tools or whatever, and the um, guy had a listing, and he had about I don't know a pickup load of uh, of hammer handles that uh, he had for sale. Um, so anyway, I got in touch with them, and it was it wasn't too far away. Um, and this is down in the Bay Area, by the way, folks. Um, it wasn't too far away, so anyway, I made an appointment. I went out and uh, bought some handles from them. Um, they're super nice handles, and um, I don't know where he got them. And uh, the boxes, um, the ones that were still boxed, were marked Pac Bell. So, um, you know, Pac Bell hasn't been around in a while, so uh, my guess is it was some auction buy. Um, and he had boxes and boxes and boxes of these. I tried to buy a whole box, but he, he wouldn't budge on the price, so I just bought four. Um, and um, for those people that, uh, that live up in the hills and uh, have, have uh, striking tools, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, a, a couple of my handles uh, uh, spontaneously exploded. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. So. Uh, so anyway, I needed some handles, and uh, and he was selling them for better than half price. So uh, uh, and uh, so they're pretty nice. Anyway, uh, so you know, 
I don't know. I, I pretty much cruise Craigslist uh, regularly, right? And um, um, it's pretty surprising what you find. And uh, I've been tagging or putting a few little things on the ends of the videos, uh, weird stuff that I find on Craigslist. But anyway, this was a good Craigslist find, so thumbs up. Guys still got a, a whole pile of them. Um, they're, you know, they're reasonably priced. It's not an awesome uh, deal, but, uh, um, you know, I needed, I needed, I think, three and, and one spare, right? I think it was three, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, I get these for 10 bucks a piece, which is pretty good. And they're normally, you know, $22 or something like that. So, I need Stanley. I don't even know if Stanley makes them anymore, honestly. So, so this next one is a, a it's another, <clears throat> another Craigslist find. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and, you know, there's nothing special about it other than um, I needed one of these. And this is part of my... Uh, um, Part of my insulation uh, installation deal, right? And uh, guy, actually local up here in the hills, uh, McCullumy Hill, um, had one of these listed on Craigslist, brand new, no box though, and uh, you know it's about half price, right? And uh, I've been kind of waiting to buy one. I need to attach a, a two by four down at the floor to. Um, secure the um, inner panels that are going to cover the uh, the solid insulation um, you know and I don't want to road a hammer into the uh, concrete and then put the anchors in it it's a lot easier just to go boom 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 you know and shoot a two by four down right and then attach to the two by four um, you know and you use a fastener like that right um, but anyway uh, you know I, I've been planning this job for a while and um, um, and so you know, I guess what I'm saying is, if if you're patient and uh, and you keep your eyes open, uh, you know, you can save yourself some money. Um, the insulation broker that I uh, that I found that I'm probably going to buy the insulation from, it was it was a Craigslist find, right? It's a guy in Nevada, got a huge warehouse, and they buy leftovers and lots and whatnot, and then resell them and whatnot, and it's. Uh, I don't know, it's about uh, one a fifth the price, something like that. So, you know, 20% of new, something like that, which is pretty hard to ignore, you know, instead of uh, uh, 30 bucks or, yeah, 30 bucks a sheet, you know, it's 15, you know, that's 50%. But uh, um, um, actually, the insulation prices have gone up. And um, so, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's even better now. So I don't have exact numbers. But anyway, uh, you know, the thing worked fine. I tested it. It was kind of, <laughs> it was fun to test. <laughs> the, um, the previous owner had left a, uh, a, uh, a sack of concrete out in the uh, outside and it became a solid block of concrete. And that was my, uh, my test victim for this, right? And uh, and then this this little red toolbox that was a thrift store find for ten bucks, and you know uh, and I'm going to show you some shop organization stuff that I've done, uh, some additional things. You know it's nice to you know keep a particular thing all together, right? So I can just grab this and I have everything I need to do that work, right? And it's all kind of in one place, and uh, so I call it kitting, right? You kit. You kit up a, a particular, you know, thing or operation or whatever, but you know nothing magical here other than it's a decent Craigslist find. And uh, um, if you're not uh, looking at Craigslist regularly, um, you're missing out on some uh, meeting some cool people, uh, having a, a Craigslist adventure, and saving some money. So uh, those are my reasons for using Craigslist. So, so here's an interesting lay that I found on Craigslist. Uh, it's Italian made. It's a clover, uh, 1725. So 17 inch swing and then 25 inch in the gap. Uh, looks like a nice heavy duty, well made machine. A lot of Italian machines are quite nice. Uh, what's really interesting about this particular one is it has some kind of enhanced threading abilities. Um, you'll notice on the headstock there that it actually has a flip chart. 
uh, describing all the feeds and speeds and possible threads. Um, the owner states that it can do uh, a 2.2 inch lead per revolution, 56 millimeter. Now, it, he didn't include pictures of all the charts in the, in the, the flip chart thing, so it's a little hard to interpret. But uh, this thing will do uh, a 1.75 lead at least, uh, which is one and three quarter inches per revolution, which is pretty impressive and very cool, I might add. So here's another fun Craigslist find. Uh, it's just a big wrench. <laughs> it looks like it's never been used. Uh, I think it's three and a half inches. You know, check out the uh, Coke can for, uh, for scale. Anyway, just a fun, uh, interesting find on Craigslist. Never know what you're going to find. So this next one is, uh, is a shop organizational thing. And um, um, so this, it's mainly this case here, the wood case. Um, and I built that uh, with, a, uh, with a circular saw, basically. I don't have a table saw yet. I'm working on that, so uh, stay tuned on that one. So I think I got, I, I, I got a couple uh, lined up. Anyway, uh, um, in the, the shop that I used to manage, uh, we built some of these uh, that were, I don't know, six feet high, and they had you know individual spaces like this um, for this kind of uh, compartmented uh, plastic uh, box, right? And these are cheap. Um, there's the McMaster part number. And I think these are like nine bucks or something like that, uh, which isn't too bad. And, uh, and these hold a lot of stuff. But if you're like me, you got a lot of stuff. And, um, um, you know, one of the better things that you can do organizationally is put like things together. And, uh, and certainly things that... Uh, um, um, go together together keep them together right uh, but a lot of that is like itty bitty little stuff right could be fasteners could be screws uh, could be scalpel blades uh, whatever or little tubes of diamond lapping stuff right okay so you got okay so how do you you know how would you store that normally basically you put it in a bag or throw it in a drawer or whatever right and uh, so this is kind of a cheap way to, to kind of organize that stuff. Um, now, like I said, this is a prototype. My buddy uh, Robert over at uh, Russell Woodworks down in the Bay Area, um, he cut me a bunch of uh, um, pieces of plywood, I cut to size already, uh, so I can make uh, uh, some additional ones. And, uh, cause I have, I, have, I have more of these. Um, and one of the, like I said, one of the things, you know, you got a, a masonite shelf. You can pull that out and actually kind of use it like that too, right? And, um, you know, and the more organized you are, right, the easier it is to put your hands on the stuff when you need it, right? Now, I did this because my memory's going, and I can't remember what number blade is what shape, right? And... Um, the, the retard or the uh, the goofballs that package these all they do is put a number on them you can't see the damn blade in there right hello you know this is certainly a, a better way to do it right it's like oops watch out there mr. wizard that's a recipe for a ER trip all right get in there that's certainly better you can see what the heck's going on right and uh, but a lot of these don't have that so I put a little legend up there um, cause I got frustrated with opening a package and going, eh, that's not the one I want. Right. And, uh, but anyway, uh, you can, um, you know, if you're a sheet metal guy, you can make the, these are, uh, eighth inch masonite. Uh, the ones we did, uh, at the shop that I managed, uh, we did eighth inch aluminum. Uh, the, the shelves are a little stiffer and, uh, we kind of, uh, rounded uh, the corners and polished the edges a little bit so they they slipped in and out of the uh, the slots uh, real nice pretty simple construction and uh, now please excuse my uh, my cabinetry here <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a woodchuck and like I said uh, I, I qualify this as I built it with a uh, uh, with a, a circulars a battery 
powered uh, circular saw. <laughs> so uh, wood, wood chucks uh, are rolling over in their sawdust piles right now. <laughs> anyway, uh, shop organizational thing. Uh, pretty soon I'll have four more of these, and uh, and I'll load them up with uh, with bins and and get a bunch of little junk uh, organized uh, so I can put my hands on it. Let's do a little uh, wire EDM update. So. Um, I did a bunch of replumbing from the uh, the pump cart here over to the uh, the filtration and uh, DI uh, resin exchange setup. Um, replaced a bunch of hoses, rerouted, um, kind of sanitized them a little bit, and uh, you know cleaned them up. And uh, I'm still I ordered some uh, some fittings that haven't come in yet that I need, and I'm about to order filters and resin bag. Um, so, uh, um, been working on that. I mean, it's, it's not interesting work, you know, routing hoses and, uh, you know, plumbing and stuff like that. So, you know, I just, I haven't videoed it, sorry. Um, then I built this little, uh, this little pallet because, you know, this is a design weakness, I think, with this, with these machines is they have water, they got the machine, they got filtration, they've got chillers, they got a bunch of stuff, right? And the, the wires and hoses just go all over the place. And um, so, you know, what you need is a trench in the concrete to kind of hide all that stuff to make it nice, right? Well, I'm not going to do that. So I built a, a little thing so I'm not walking on these hoses and wires when I'm going in and behind the machine, right? I mean, come on, right? And it's like they went, oh, oops, we got a bunch of hoses we got to deal with. Crap, what do we do, right? So, I don't know. I mean, to me, you got high pressure hoses that go to the back of the machine. I don't know. They could have, they could have made it nicer. But hey, I guess that's the deal. And I'm sure the modern ones are, you know, these are much more integrated. Uh, this is kind of a late '90s machine, so. Uh, um, but anyway, I fired it up the other day, and uh, I fired up, it still knows it's a CNC machine, um, thanks to the memory battery. And uh, now this is the one that came out. I'll tell you a little story. And um, when I went to look at this machine the very first time, um, the, the background on the thing was the guy died, his uh, daughter was looking to sell the machine, uh, it hadn't been run in a couple of years uh, since he had died, and uh, so I said, okay, well, I'd like to come look at it and try to start it up and see if it'll start up, right? And, um, and it did. It started up, so I was like, yeah, excellent, right? And the CNC came up, I jogged it around, everything looked uh, like it works fine, right? Um, now, I brought this, this exact battery with me just in case. Uh, and it turns out that it's, um, uh, well, the, uh, the Fanix have uh, this little uh, pigtail lead like this, and my uh, Makino is the same thing. So I had an extra battery, but uh, betting on the cum, what I did was I went ahead and changed the battery that was in the machine at that time. And, uh, you know, in case the deal went through that I wasn't going to end up with a dead machine that I'd have to reload parameters and do all that stuff. So uh, now the date on this is 10 20 That's when I changed this battery. And um, um, I just started the machine the other day and put a new battery in it uh, just a couple of days ago. And uh, so that's about three years. Uh, <laughs> like 10... Well, anyway, yeah, it's three years. It's over three years, right? And uh, um, so I lucked out, and uh, the machine still knows it's a machine, and uh, and, and all that. But uh, if uh, you're not changing your memory batteries, you better do it because it's a pain in the neck if you don't. But anyway, that's that's the story of this, and uh, uh, hope you like that. One of the next things I need to do here uh, on the um, the Fanuc Wire EDM is to clean all this old grease off of the um, the rails here the thk rails and the uh the ball screws that uh, that move the different axes um 
So I ran into a little problem in that the uh, um, the quote unquote uh, FANUC recommended grease for these THK rails is not available. Um, it's a um, Shell, Alvania, blah blah blah, which is now superseded by uh, uh, Shell Gaddis. Uh, and it's a particular viscosity and whatnot. Um, anyway, there's none in the U.S. right now. You can order it from England uh, if you're lucky. Um, and so I was looking for a cross-reference, right? This is a pretty common problem in machine tools, right? But uh, so I talked to the uh, uh, a guy that sells grease, right? And he says, "Yep, uh, the Gaddis. We've been we've had it on order for a year. Uh, we don't know when we're going to get it. Blah blah blah." I go, "Well, what's the cross-reference?" He goes, "Boy, I wish I could give you one, right?" So there it is, kind of in a nutshell, right? And and here's the and here's one of the problems, right? Is he's he he may have something that's perfectly fine, okay, but he's unwilling to recommend it, right? So um, I resolved the problem in a different way, okay. Um, and um, but as a as a you know his reputation's on the line, right? So if he if he get, if he says yeah this X Y Z grease will work fine, uh, it but heads up it may void your warranty uh, if you use something that's not the exact manufacturer's specification, right? So I call bullsh baloney on that, okay? In that, um, you know yes there's differences in lubricants agreed, okay? But if you look, these are manufactured by THK, okay? Uh, these aren't manufactured by FANUC, right? Okay, they're manufactured by THK. So what do you think? Uh, do you think THK knows more about their linear ways, their, their, their cars and rails than FANUC does? I would say yes, okay? So guess what? You can get THK grease uh, that's, that's specified for linear rails operating at, at, at different speeds, blah, blah, blah. So now I can easily cross-reference a grease, which I can get, and very comfortably put this on here and not worry that uh, uh, I'm going to have a problem. Now, obviously, this machine is out of warranty, right? Um, but I see this this comes up in the in the machine tool industry quite a bit people uh, they panic over uh, you know what lube for what area and if they 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 are deeply concerned if they deviate even you know one, a tenth of a viscosity point from what the manufacturers recommended uh, uh, a grade of lubricant okay bottom line is any lube is better than no lube Okay, and I can certainly do better than this. This is probably the original grease uh, that the machine was shipped with, uh, knowing the, the guy that I got this machine from. So I'll clean that up, clean it up nice and, and, and shiny, and then re-lubricate it, the uh, ball screws and the, and the linear ways. I'm going to put the covers on it. I'm going to run the machine. Okay, and uh, guess what? Probably won't notice anything. Um, but that's Tom's two cents worth uh, on that is there's ways to resolve um, confusion um, by looking at what you're doing. Um, and then I, I would admit that there are certain cases, uh, spindle bearings and, uh, and things like that, that you really need to be pretty much on target uh, with uh, to, uh, um, you know, have the optimal performance, right? This is not one of them. So uh, I just wanted to uh, briefly talk about safety without uh, making a big deal out of it, okay? And um, so recently uh, um, uh, a friend of mine uh, alerted me to the fact that a, a fellow YouTuber had a, a pretty serious accident in their shop. And uh, they have a machine shop and automotive shop. And um, anyway, they had a, they had a fire. And um, um, so, anyway, I watched uh, his video on, you know, the aftermath and what happened and all that stuff. And I started thinking about it. I'm like, well, you know, so I guess I just wanted to explain kind of my philosophy on, on safety, how I think about it, right? Now, 
and I call it the eternal vigilance for the other person, okay? And you might go, oh, that sounds kind of weird, right? And, uh, well, it is kind of weird, right? And here's why. Um, I don't feel like we personally are good judges of our own safety, okay? Um, I've certainly demonstrated uh, on camera that, uh, um, you know, personal risk and risk taking for myself um, is probably not healthy, okay? Um, the example, the counter to that, right? So what I'm saying is we are not good judges of our own safety, okay? And uh, what I mean also by that is we've all been up a ladder and leaned where we shouldn't have leaned and stretched where we shouldn't have stretched or gosh, I'm going to grind the head of that thing off. Okay, where's my glasses? Ah, I'll just do it, blah, blah, you know. So we all do those things. So we take risks personally now. And uh, so what I mean is, uh, by eternal vigilance for the other person is um, think about how you behave when your wife or your child or some loved one has to do one of those same operations, right? So you, you, you tend to ratchet up a little bit and, uh, and make them do it right uh, or do it yourself. And <laughs> but that's, that's another argument, right? But uh, um, so like when my wife has to use the ladder in the house, I usually I'll hold the ladder for her or I'll do it myself or I don't want to see her get hurt. Okay, just like you wouldn't want to see your children or, or any other loved ones uh, or your workmates even get hurt, right? So if we have eternal vigilance for the other person, we're always looking out for that other person. We're watching them from across the shot. Hey, that looks sketchy, right? Uh, and go over and help them or whatever, right? Um, I would hope, and if everybody did that, they'd be watching me too. And when I was doing one of those sketchy operations, they would be looking out for me and say something, right? And I'd go, yeah, you're right. Okay, let me let me just stop. Let me do this. Let me get the ladder in the right place or, you know, whatever it is, right? Um, so that's kind of what I mean. And uh, so when you're <laughs> feeling like you're going to sketch town, um, just take a, take a breath and, and ask yourself, well, what would you do if this was your kid? Um, would you move the ladder closer? Would you... Uh, um, you know, put that kerosene heater out before you start using, uh, uh, filling your car with gasoline inside the shop, w whatever it is, right? I don't know what it is. There's too many, too many possibilities. So, um, so anyway, just have that eternal vigilance for the other person and, and, you know, ask, you know, be critical and ask yourself that question, right? If, if my wife or child were doing this, what would I do different, right? And, uh, and maybe you do something different and maybe you don't, right? I'm not here to uh, uh, pedantically uh, preach uh, particular methods or anything like that. There's too many scenarios to do that, right? So, um, um, and the bottom line is things that look scary to untrained eyes are not necessarily scary to trained eyes, right? So uh, just keep that in mind. Anyway, enough said about that. I just wanted to say a few words and um, uh, about my philosophy on that, and then uh, um, you know, just try to be try to be safe. You want to keep all your fingers. You want to keep doing this as long as you possibly can. So um, um, anyway, thanks for listening. All right, that's about all I got. Uh, kind of a quick update. Sorry, that was a lot of talking. And, um, but um, um, I really appreciate you guys uh, and your comments and uh, following my journey in the uh, uh, getting my shop back together and the and words of encouragement that you all uh, uh, put in the comments. So thanks very much for that. Um, I wanted to give a quick shout out to uh, uh, another YouTube channel and uh, a good friend of mine, and that's uh, uh, Chuck Bomarito and uh, otherwise known as Outside Screwball on YouTube. And um, Chuck, is a, he's, a, he's a cool cat, and he's probably one of my first subscribers to my channel. So, uh, um, and, you know, I've, and I've mentioned him before off and on, and um, recently Chuck has been putting together these uh, Northern California kind of meet and greet uh, 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 
swap meets and shop tours and things like that. So uh, anyway, uh, there's a link in the description. Go check out Chuck's channel. Um, you know, after, uh, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, I, I talked about old iron machine works and Randy Richard in the shop. Chuck sends me a text and says, hey, what am I, Swiss cheese or cream cheese? Uh, I don't get a plug. And, um, and I thought about it and I go, well, that's how you get an anti-plug. <laughs> so I considered uh, actually paying people to unsubscribe from his channel, but uh, I'm just joking. <laughs> But uh, anyway, like I said, Chuck's a cool cat. Go check out his channel. Um, he's a, uh, a self-proclaimed seagull. This guy can find deals. He's a dumpster diver, Craigslister, and his shop is chock full of love uh, that he's uh, seagulled uh, uh, over the years. So anyway, Chuck, if you're listening, uh, uh, here's your plug, buddy, and uh, thanks for being a, a good friend. So uh, anyway, see you guys soon, and uh, hopefully I'll be back next week uh, with some uh, bracket fabrication for the, uh, the come along. We'll finish that job up and get it off the plate and move on to something else. Okay, catch you later.